wasn't getting on. The objective of this one was to involve the girls in an aviation-related mission. <laughs> did you write it down? I did. 118.85. Thank you, Steve. CRM. <laughs> Good job. While also serving to help get me back in the saddle for flight test prep for the instrument rating. How's Daddy doing? <laughs> Good. 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 All right. Do you guys want to be isolated now so you don't have to listen to all the mumbo jumbo? Yes. <laughs> Hey, bye. They aren't that impressed bye. with Daddy. <laughs> the number our deal was that if I had done my written test by the time we saw each other, you get to punch me in the face. Yeah. So you're done. And you're a big guy, so I made, I made sure that... Uh, so your face is protected. <laughs> This was spring break immediately after I'd managed to pass the written test for the instrument rating. My family and I took a trip down south, and longtime friend and flight shop supporter Jim hosted us in his brand new Cirrus. And you'll get back to that post takeoff checklist? Yep. There were tons of learning moments across multiple legs that we flew on this trip, and I'm going to share as many as I can in this one. Flaps, verify up. Yep. Cirrus 3, whiskey hotel, flying 190. 190, first stop. 190 for the heading. 190, check. Uh, airspeed 120. Check. Fuel pump boost. Check. Fuel flow monitor. Check. Engine parameters monitor. Everything is good. Manifold pressure is a little high. That's very intentional. We can keep the fuel flow up. So we're at a safe height now. You called 120, but I like to wait. I like to get as high as we can, as quick as we can. And then I'll go into the cruise decline profile, which is 120 knots. This is the seventh instrument rating status vlog. It's an ongoing series. I designed different looking thumbnails and titles to make it clear that this series is sort of different from the usual content on the channel. It's a nerdy deep dive into IFR. And what I'll do is I'll fly these manually about uh, once a week, just so I thought this is the right way to do it, despite what the internet says and the critics say, you know, you're sticking rudder. I'm, I'm comfortable with my sticking rudder. This is the safest mode of flying an airplane on a departure. Yeah. But you should recheck your skill set. So, okay, we're coming up on 6,000. You can plug it in because our current rate of climb will put us there in 15 seconds. So, so direct. Direct. Enter. Approach. Uh, and one one making sure it is what it is. Yep. Activate. Five got it. And nav now, or you want to wait? Nav now. There it is. Six thousand. Now verify. GPS took over. Yep. And verify here. Verify here. We're dead on. If you want a bigger picture, which I, we usually like to watch that anyway. And we're cleared to eight thousand. Cool. All right, so all our checks are good. The next check we'll do is our cruise climb. And you can also see we're burning a ton of fuel right now, for four, over 40 gallons. So watch our balance and switch over now to the left tank. And we don't have any pump because it's already on. Pump's on, just go ahead and switch. You got it. And we're just watching to see if pressure or anything changed. Exactly. It, remember, we're an IFR flight, so we are still responsible to look outside, which I'm doing. But this is key to when you're IMC. Yep. Get your flows going. And you know, you, you fly a lot of airplanes, so have totally different flows, so we're not gonna, we're not trying to perfect this. No, that's it's right. It's just an introduction to flow management, resource management, sharing duties, call outs, checklists. Everything okay in the back seat? Yeah, I'm yep. okay. Awesome. 3D5, Foxtrot, Tango, contact, approach 125.3. How's Daddy doing? Five point three. Amazing. Yeah, I think so too. Good, good, good. Good, all right. Do you guys want to be isolated now, so you don't have to listen to all the mumbo jumbo? Yes. <laughs> Hey, bye. They aren't that impressed bye. with daddy. <laughs> so this whole thing really was about trying to justify bringing the girls along for what was ultimately a working vacation for me. They got to do some fun traveling and it wasn't all work for Jim and I, we did get some fishing in. But I want to clarify, Jim is not an instructor, but he's a friend of mine that I asked for some coaching. He's really been racking up some good recent experience logging almost 700 hours in the IFR system this year alone. Take a look at our crab angle against the GPS. So we got a heck of a crab, so where else can we see what's going on with the G1000 with our wind? To the corner down there? Exactly. Yep. That's a pretty nasty crosswind. Yeah, 33 knots at 8,000 feet. What do you call those boxes we're flying through, the virtual airway? Yeah, you either love them or hate them. I think it's just cool. It's like Star Wars. But it's neat to see it like off-center. It gets a little annoying when you're hand-flying IMC, I will admit that, because I don't. I rely on, on a lot of other things besides that. 
So you can see your heading. Uh, another great thing that right here, see the deficit. So, so if you want to do there's mental there's math, you can. Fast. This is really just a display of what the wind is doing. Right. This is how it's affecting us. We have a five knot tailwind. 31 knots are hitting us at the side of the airplane. Now, if you want to do it the old fashioned way that we all used to do it, we'd go get our compass heading which is about 211 on the compass, and it says 212 here, and there's my chart that would explain it. Yep. But anyway, you could calculate it there against the flight plan page, and we should be on a 202 course. So that should equal 202, that should equal 212, and there we've got our wind correction. But you can validate it here and validate it there as well. So this weekend trip took us from Orlando to St. Augustine for a night and then to Savannah, Georgia. So there's going to be a bunch of intercutting between different legs. So don't mind the wardrobe changes. All right, girls, you're back on. Cool. Yeah. Number 363 Whiskey Hotel for the climb. Fly hitting of 36, uh, I'm sorry, 270. 2703 is at this point, you're just bugging everything, but if you were writing it down, you'd be using your handy-dandy little... Um, I don't usually do it this part because it's too fast. Yeah, so you're just bugging it and doing it? Yeah. Yeah. And really what I'm doing it for in flight is two things. One, I usually ask a pilot like you, once we're in flight, I'll go, um, cover that. I'll cover that. Say, what's our on-course heading? And what frequency were we just on? Right. And you're supposed to... And you'll go, well, uh, I don't know. So, it's here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the only time I use it. It'd be surprising how many times when the frequency of them on a long trip goes quiet. I go, am I on the right one? And yeah. Then, and then I, yeah. November 363 Whiskey Hotel, flight heading of 360 and climb and maintain 5,000. 360, climb, maintain 5,000. 360, still. So I'll do, I'll see you. if I can get through. I'll give you the instructions when you get closer to Lake Monroe. Three miles northeast, altitude indicates 2,200. Four usually gives you a thing, and I think it's because it figures out the probable. What if it's 1.23 times the square root of the altitude or something is the distance they should be able to receive it? Oh, is that right? Yeah. Crash off my in So it's 1.23 times the square root of the height is supposed to be your reception distance in miles. A friend of mine told me when I was going to get my IFR, said, 41, just let me know you'll when you be get the best IFR, IFR pilot the day, the day you pass the written and the day you pass the flight test. Right After that, it's down no. Yeah. You'll find that comfortable medium place where you have your knowledge base you, and the other stuff is frivolous. Section 335, Orlando departure right at climb and maintain 2,500. Well, and that was part of my problem was, like, I knew if I got the rating yesterday, I'd be unsafe in three months. Then I'm not going to be using it. So I'm working toward a plan to be able to use it. Hey, did I tell you about the RV-14? Yeah. yeah, it's a scary prospect. I mean, it's like having a baby to commit to building an airplane, but I have a lot of help. Yeah. So that'll be a pretty serious IFR platform. Oh, yeah. Good plane, too. And it, yeah, yeah it'll be a two-seater, but and it's a bigger than a seven. It's a 14, so it okay, carries a fair bit. Comfortable for two. Is it tandem or five five beside five each other? Five yeah, five. it's a close to a perfect airplane in terms of cross-country fast. Phoenix Air five zero zero. And it can go upside down. This trip down to see Jim also took place before my deep dive into the sim world, which is something else that I've got going on that I'm trying to combine into my IFR journey. How long do you think it took you to get comfortable with the G1000? About three months. I didn't have access to the plane every day. Sometimes it was once a week, and if there was no way to go back, check it. At that time, the uh, it was a CD-ROM uh, simulator that was so archaic. You had to move your mouse. It didn't, didn't emulate any of this, so you couldn't really get it, get it down. So this conversation with Jim in the spring was actually part of what sealed the deal for me to get a home sim going by the summer. Look at the size of the crowd in this room. This is bonkers. I'm getting a little bit used to doing these things, but I'm going to admit, when I see a crowd this big, I'm going to speak to it, I get nervous. The sim community is huge. It's enormous. And the amount of hardware that they've got that matches so that the buttonology can become a thing, like you're not struggling with trying to use your mouse, like what you were talking about on your sim, that, yeah. or your older one. So yeah, the modern sims can really emulate what you're dealing with, because I think what I want to do is get a Garmin 430 unit thing to play with, because that's what I'm going to do my training and my flight test on, is a PA-28 with a 430. That's going to be my main tool. It'll so help you. Yeah, it'll totally help me. 
Get yeah. ready for the flight test. This is the last thing you want to be thinking about. You want to be thinking about how do I controlling the airplane in the absence of an autopilot? And how do I keep one hand flying the airplane while one hand is looking for information to verify what I'm doing or looking down? So physical and mental. And right. And if you more you get to muscle memory, the less thinking you're doing about which button is it again. Right, yeah, that is the worst when you're actually moving at 200 knots. Yeah. So if you can do that at home, when, when you can press pause. Yeah, yeah that yeah, is it'll, awesome. It'll really help you. Okay, so what's handy about this one is we need 10.5 more gallons, and we just so happen to use 10.5. So there you've got 21 gallons is pretty much working the plan. Let's see how four flight did predict it. So, awesome tool and four flight. Awesome recomputing here. So, it's a good sanity check again. Winds are changing, even for the better. You know, maybe you want to have your bladder out. It's good. Let's go next airport and change your destination. So, right here. Two hours and 15 minutes. We're expecting to use 21 gallons. So it's my little, you know what a told card is? I kind of think about a little told card. The big mistake I think people make when they criticize the G1000 is how oh, it's following the pink line. Yeah, I guess. Sure saves a lot of it. <laughs> yeah. And that led to more talking about what we needed to know for the written test. For Canadian flight tests, we had to know that within 10 miles, it's accurate to 35 degrees. And then within 18 miles, it's accurate to 10 degrees. I used to know all those two. So I've got this thing memorized how it looks. Uh, so that I understand why it's important to know. Because if you are more than 10 miles away, and you're more than 35 degrees off, then yeah. you're not going to... I, I Once I learned this, I almost never fly an ILS anymore. Because you're always... Rare. I'm always RNAV. They'll say the ILS is in use. They'll say that on the ATIS, and I'll go, I'll request the RNAV. It's just easier for me than chasing a needle. This is what you would call the bayou? Yeah, it looks like one, doesn't it? It's like houses that have giant walkway docks. You see, you're starting to get the flow of it, right? You gotta think first, what is it, what information am I going after? Uh, procedure. What is it I'm going after? Oh, a flight plan. What is it I'm going after? Oh, trip data. And then you gotta get to that, that menu. Yeah. Now, there are some shortcut keys, but that's your that's your thinking as you get used to this thing. For me, what always gets me is the big knob, little knob, and trying to know what does what for like changing letters and changing yeah. where the cursor is, and that's just pure. I just you, just, you just yeah. have to memorize. Yeah. Get to that point of muscle memory. Yeah. Think of the big knob as your cursor, as your initial like move in the mouse. The small knob gets you in position to click. That's kind of how I think of used to think of it. So debriefing this one while editing kind of really did help me get back in the zone after a couple really busy months of production and traveling for other unrelated but time sensitive trips. So let's end this one watching me try to copy the clearance for the return trip home. At Savannah Clearance, it's Cirrus November 363 Whiskey Hotel with Whiskey at Shelter, IFR to our Orlando executive, uh, Oscar Romeo Lima. Probably went too fast. Three Whiskey Hotel, you're number two, step up. Uh, three six three whiskey hotel. So on a standby, you don't acknowledge it. Okay. Yep. Because standby just means standby, so you don't have to even say, just be quiet. Okay. I don't know how it is in Canada, but that's that's standard here. So problem. He's he's talking the ground. That's what he's doing. Or so you should be ready because he's going to come back and fire it at you. Yep. He won't ask if you're ready. Not yep. usually. Jim and I have a great working relationship, and although some of his critiques may seem harsh, it's exactly what I asked for, so it's not the case. And also, a lot of the flying he does is for Angel Flight. He asked me to plug that organization, and it's a really great way that you can help out people in need. So definitely look into it if you've got the time. I'll put some additional information in the description as well. So girls, you can listen to this, but please, yeah, 41, please don't uh, talk, okay? Sirius 363 Whiskey Hotel, Savannah Clearance, I have a clearance voucher to copy. Go ahead. Sirius 3 Whiskey Hotel, cleared to the Oscar Romeo Lima Airport as filed. Climb and maintain 3,000. Expect 8,000 minutes after departure. Departure frequency is 120.4, squawk 4240. Okay, we're cleared to Oscar Romeo Lima as filed. It's going to be 3,000 initially, 8,000 10 minutes after departure. We're going to be on uh, 120.4, squawking 4240. 
Sears. Three Whiskey Hotel, Rebecca's correct. Contact ground, point nine, ready taxi. Oh, contact ground, ready taxi, zero. Three, six, three, let's go tell. So I should have said my identity at the end of that. I forgot about you, just give me um, a second. So a couple things. So when he says, um, ready to copy, officially it's 363 said. Whiskey Hotel, ready to copy, right. or 363 Whiskey Hotel. Just give him your... Make sure you're the right guy. Yeah, you're just, you're just going to improve your phraseology. That's the only thing. When he, when he says, um, call ground back to taxi, you're not being given uh, an instruction. Don't you're being given a notification. Right. So just say, welcome. Right. I'll comply. Absolutely. Okay. Um, or you can say copy, but Wilco would be the correct uh, response to, because you're being given an instruction to do something, but not a flight instruction. Right. Yeah. So cool. okay. yeah, you got it. And uh, so just keep practicing that. So thanks again to Jim and all the other Patreon supporters and the sponsors for helping create this content. And until next time, keep your flight chops sharp.